And just like that, we have a photo finish. Uh, welcome everybody to the post race stream for Daytona. Uh, I think that we all have probably a lot of things to say about that. Really quick, I'm gonna let you go, guys know now before anyone says a bunch of stuff. Uh, I burn my arms up pretty bad, not like sunburn, but like it just looks bad. So I'm putting a towel over it because honestly, I don't want anyone seeing that crap. Um, but Enough about me. Let's talk about this race. The 2023 Wawa 250 uh, definitely had great moments, had some iffy ones. Uh, but in the end, I really don't think it's too, uh, too much to complain about in the grand scheme of things. We got a photo finish out of this race, which was a ton of fun. And no, it's not lobster burn. It's like actual burn burn. Um, so that was not lobster me up here. Uh, <laughs> this one actually hurts a little more. Uh, but really quick, with two races remaining in the regular season, uh, we have uh, the playoff points set up here. Josh Berry is ninth plus 110. Uh, then Creed plus 60. Hemrick plus 57. And Parker Kligerman now plus 20. Riley Herps minus 20. Brandon Jones minus 89. Uh, and then... I believe that is Moffitt minus 116 and Kaz Grala minus 182. Uh, we're, we're getting a pretty clear picture of what this playoff battle is going to be looking like towards the finish. Riley Herbst with a, a pretty bad night overall, all things considered. Um, but this race was two hours, 17 minutes and 45 seconds long. 20 lead changes among nine leaders with six cautions, though... Towards the end, it felt like a lot more than six, 110 laps in this one. Justin Allgaier is your winner. By the way, lick that like button. Uh, the, the amount of likes is not to the sufficient need it should be. Uh, but Justin Allgaier gets the win in this one over Sheldon Creed by five one thousandths of a second. I am going to put that in the chat right now. Five one thousandths of a second. That's the number you got. Wow. That is a close finish. Then you got Daniel Hemrick in third. Fourth is Parker Kligerman. Fifth is Cole Custer. Then Parker Retzlaff in sixth. Seventh, Ryan Sieg. Eighth, Anthony Alfredo. Greg Galding, ninth, tenth. Justin Haley. Jeffrey Earnhardt with an 11th place run. Jeb Burton comes home 22nd. 20, uh, or is in the 20th. 22, I should say, comes home 12th uh, in that Ward Burton style. 22 did not have the 2002 luck of Ward Burton. A lot of twos in the statement. Kyle Sieg in 13th. Joey Gase, 14th. Jordan Anderson, 15th. I have to imagine it's his, either his first start of the year or one of the first. I, I think it's his first. Uh, Garrett Smithley in 16th. 17th, Josh Berry. Then you got Brett Moffitt in 18th, 19th, Sam Mayer and Kaz Grala, 20th, last car on the lead lap. Sam, Sammy Smith, 21st, a lap down. Chandler Smith, so the two Smiths finished with each other. Chandler finishes one lap down. Uh, Austin Hill, a lap down in 23rd. Then Riley Herbst, two down in 24th. And Perkins, last car on track in 25th. Uh, Going to sound probably crazy. But everybody else is a lap down from this point on. Jeremy Clemens, 26th. Josh Williams, 27th. John Hunter Nemechek, 28th. Bain, 29th. Yaley, 30th. Baccarella in 31st. Ellis in 32nd. Weatherman, 33rd. Joe Graff Jr., 34th. Decker, Natalie Decker, in her, I believe, first start of the Xfinity season, comes home 35th. Right above Brandon Jones. Jones comes home 36th. Mosack in 37th, and is that Gannett, I think, in 38th? I haven't seen that name often, so I'm not really going to know. Uh, while we go over this race, I will put the post-race results up top. They are somewhat unofficial, uh, but by five one-thousandths of a second, we got ourselves a photo finish on the night. Uh, so... Let's get into this race. I'll keep an eye on what you're saying in the chat. Um, and man, <laughs> there was some there was some good. There was some bad. We're going to get into it. So first off, I want to say I don't really pay attention to the pre-race 
more often than not, especially at the pre-race prayer. Really don't care. I, I use that time like usually usually I like I take a shower right before the race or something, or I like you know get something to eat. Um, but I have to admit that the shaking and bacon part did make me chuckle. Uh, so good on that guy. That was pretty funny. Uh, from there, though, so Austin Hill starts on the pole. Many people thinking, oh man, he's starting on the pole already. It's going to be rough for everybody. Um, it was rough for everybody at one point and another. Uh, but starting out the race, five cars, the 22, seven, Justin Allgaier, I believe it was, was in that group. Uh, the 39, 27, and 31, all on lap one, had to do a pass-through penalty for not passing through inspection cleanly. Uh, from there, the first issues of the night came on lap eight, as reported by Riley Herbst, who had steering issues. Uh, those would come up to bite him a little bit later. Uh, from there, you had Austin Hill uh, leading the choo-choo train. Some tried to make a, a move. But from there, it was Hill winning the stage over Creed, then Chandler Smith, Brett Moffitt, Anthony Alfredo, Daniel Hemrick, Brandon Jones, Clements, Custer, and Bain, the top 10 in stage one. And at the same time as it finishes, Riley Herbst has a left front flat, destroys the front fender, but it fixes the uh, steering issue, apparently. Uh, but tough luck. For Herbst, he basically, he finished 24th because of attrition, not because he did anything worthwhile. He spent pretty much all night two or three laps down. He just had no luck. No luck whatsoever. Uh, they restart on lap 37 and immediately go three wide. At this point, I'm thinking, man, we're, we're going to ramp this thing up a bit. Uh, you know, you have Creed jumping out in front of the 21, and a lap later, it does ramp up a little too much with a big crash. The first of many big ones tonight, this one involving seven cars, a 25, 9, 24, 91, 53, 78, 39. I'd list off the driver's names, but I don't want to be listing off names all night on this thing. Lap 51, we have a restart. Field manages to actually get past the RCR duo, push them back in the into the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the pack, and we... Uh, you know, we, we actually start having a race. So I want to ask you guys this first poll of the night. Uh, who do you, which team do you think had the stronger cars? Because I think there were two, as we would find out in stage two and three, there were two teams, I think, that had the better cars in this. Um, and that would be JGR and RCR. By the way, if you're having, I, I see some might be having issues. Uh, there's no lag on my end, so that's a you problem. Uh, I apologize, or a YouTube problem. Uh, but I'm going to put RCR or JGR, because the JGR cars stayed down there with three cars uh, with, with the entire high side choo-choo training up top. So which team had the best cars tonight overall? I don't want just, oh, the 21 was better. Overall, which one was the best tonight? I swear to God, I can't type. I feel like an idiot right now. Which team had the best cars tonight? Simple sentence. Not so simple for my dumbass to type. Uh, but stage two would end out with Creed and Hill 1-2. Custer and Sammy Smith and Hemrick being the top five. Then Nemechek, Bain, Kligerman, Mayer, and Chandler Smith. Uh, with 34 to go, you have a restart. The Gibbs cars in the RCR duo start going at it. Super racy. Bain gets the lead. He's really getting aggressive. John Hunter Nemechek and Sammy Smith, in my opinion, were racing pretty dumb tonight. The moves they were making, especially John Hunter, man, I, he has so much talent and aggression. I just wish he'd harness it right because so many times he causes dumb things to happen uh, or he takes himself out of, of, of good situations because of stuff like that. Uh, we see overwhelmingly you guys are thinking – RCR, I'll let it run for a minute. Uh, but the 18 and the 20 got shuffled out, while the 19 of Bain, the better driver who was aggressive but not dumb with his aggression, managed to keep it up front or at least keep racing up front with the leaders, the RCR duo, uh, and the JRM cars who started coming up. Sam Mayer led a line of JRM cars to the front on the bottom line. Mayer got the lead, then Allgaier did, all over the span of a couple laps. With 14 to go, you got Bain getting out front, and then it's RCR basically just turning it on with 12 to go. 
up through the next three laps. And it would be Jeb Burton looking at first like a single car spin, uh, but then collecting some other cars in the back who were trying to avoid and got into each other. The 10, the 43, the 44. Got to double check if that 10's Kyle Busch. I'm kidding. Um, if you watch the NWP, you'd, you'd get that one. Uh, but we have a seven-lap caution. NASCAR choosing just to run a bunch of caution laps. Uh, I'd, I'd rather we have a little more time. Maybe maybe have a red in the back while they're working because it seemed like it was a very slow caution, but not the end of the world. That does not matter. Um, but something in the chat, and I'm going to end this poll, something in the chat that's brought up by Jar Jar Binks is, uh, with 12 to go, having commercials, in my opinion, is ridiculous. Uh, yes, this is a new era or whatever people want to use as excuse for NBC. But listen, if we're going to call out Fox for stuff that I think should rightfully be called out, I think we should call out NBC. And going to commercial from 12 to go up to almost 9 to go uh, at a super speedway race when anything could happen, I'm, I'm glad it was side by side. Glad it was. Because it should be side by side for pretty much any commercial break, in my opinion. Uh, but I, I I do not like that decision. I get it was a fast race; they didn't have many opportunities. Uh, but it, in my opinion, that's bad. And I don't care how long it lasted. It I think the last, I think, fifteen to go at a super speedway should be about the cutoff because. At that point, you're breaking into the flow of the broadcast and you're having problems. I, I, I don't, I don't like doing that. And I, you know, at least it was a shorter one, but still, I, I, I don't care if it's Fox or NBC. That's something. I, I if that happens tomorrow night, there better be that same outrage that people have about Fox because, uh, and then yes, international feed for the win. Uh, I, I keep both up, just keep tabs on stuff. But yeah, international feed for the win for that reason. And I'm hoping with this new contract that some of this stuff can get fixed. Uh, but anyway, we go to two to go. And we have, and this is two to go in regulation. This is not a green-white checker. Uh, but now we go to what ended up at first looking like it was Bane's fault. But then when the further replays were shown, being more uh, on Austin Hill and, and more of a racing deal. But I'd put more of the blame on Hill. Uh, Hill goes up on the restart after pushing Bain a little bit forward to the lead, trying to make the pass. He's getting pushed by the 16. They keep it together in the bumpers. That forces the 19 up as he's trying to correct it because the car's starting to try to kind of go to the left. Um, Dale Jr. gave an excellent uh, synopsis and analysis of that. Um, a lot better than the others in the booth, I think, did. Uh, but that caused a massive melee. I had the 19, the 21, the 1, 16, 45, 20, 07, 08, 2, 11, 22, 26. And that's probably not all of the cars that were in that wreck. But it was a big-ass wreck. And from there, that led off to the overtime finishes. And I'm like, I don't know about you guys, but at this point, I was thinking, man, I th this is dumb. I don't want this to be just one of these dumb finishes. Um, but it is what it is. Uh, with that, we have an overtime restart. Overtime number one begins, and we have another big one on the back stretch, heading into turn three, where I don't exactly. I I'll be honest, I didn't see just because I I don't know if it was just me having a lapse of concentration or what. I didn't see necessarily what caused it per se, but it, I I think it was like a few cars just getting bottled up together, if I remember. Sorry, it's been a long-ass day. Uh, but with that, you have, again, the 20 in it. 25, the 51, the 8. Josh Williams gets some air, Tony Hawk style. Like, you know, he's, he's just running right up the ramp. The 2 and Trevor Bain taken out in that as well in the 19. And we get ready for overtime number two, which, thank God was the final restart of the race. With that, you have the 26 of Kasgrava spinning. I'm so glad NASCAR didn't throw the caution for that. Uh, that was... Nice. I, I, just, I, I love when NASCAR doesn't throw the BS cautions. Uh, Rewatching old races from about 08 to 2010, they do that so much. And by the way, thank you, Nicholas Friedman, for being a member of two months. Uh, doesn't this tie the fourth closest finish list? think so i'd have to double check 
Uh, I can check that really quick, though, after we um, finish this up. Uh, the seven led at the white. Breed makes the move. They go side by side to the line. And barely, barely Allgaier wins. And I love in his post-race interview, Allgaier's looking at the replay with everybody else while the fans are. You hear the fans like, whoa, like, you know, oh, my God, like that. Um, because the angle a little bit made it look like Creed got him. Uh, but that was just angle. It was the seven got the win tonight. Uh, I guess let's look at it. Closest. I can't spell tonight. Closest NASCAR finishes of all time. I think there's like a Wikipedia list that, uh, that has them all. Because I know that. Let's see. They have all the cup ones, but my God, they don't have, I, they do not have the list of, okay, Xfinity finishes, this ties for fourth all time, uh, only behind 2018 Daytona, uh, 1996 Milwaukee, 1999 Talladega, and it ties with 2018's Firecracker 250. Uh, in tw in where Kyle Larson beat Elliott Sadler, and wow, they updated the shit quick. And it's not tied. It's just yeah, that's it's not another one that's tied. But that's it. It's it's on there already. Good good on them. Damn, that was like twenty minutes. Uh, yeah. So it, it's firmly in the top five all time for Xfinity's closest finishes. Uh, and I and I you got to think, man, with. Creed, when the hell is Creed going to get that win? It just, he very much to me, he feels like a guy who was kind of, I would say kind of like how Reddick was in the Xfinity series. You're waiting for him to just break out and win. Um, And, and I think, yeah, and I agree, Noah Coleman. I agree. Justin Hay that's the one. I think that was the first time I ever went live after a race. Yeah. Uh, but man, I feel I feel like it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen soon. Uh, and I see uh, in the chat, please no rain for tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow we'll be live after this, uh, after the Cup race, as well as Sunday for the Truck race at at, at the uh, Milwaukee Mile. Uh, but I'm gonna say it's not gonna rain tomorrow from the forecast, uh, unless it's stupid Florida ness happens, which is always possible. I don't think it's gonna rain tomorrow. Uh, but JRM doing really damn well at this point. You got to think Josh Berry's going to win too. I mean, I'm looking at the list, and, and Josh Berry and Sheldon Creed, those are two guys that they need and are going to win. I don't know when, but they cannot just keep coming up close every time like this. It, it's ridiculous how much it happens. Um, it, it's just over and over again. It's like everything that can happen to keep them out of victory lane does uh it, it, it's it's amazing to me uh but yeah five one thousandths of a second it's it, 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 it's it's he's so close he's literally so close like by the space of the cars close at this point it's not just a metaphor or like you know just talking like man he finished second he was so close no i mean he was that close um, these, uh, by the way, I am wearing a, a print shirt. And so I did want to leave a poll while I read the comments really quick, uh, of what, what your favorite print song is. Have you ever? Yeah. Have you ever says blue Jimmy a few times I have ever, uh, but no, no, I've never, uh, but man, man, it, it's going to happen really quick again. The cut line, I'm not going to read Barry or anyone below Jones. It's it's Creed up by 60, Hemrick plus 57, uh, Kligerman plus 20. Those are the three that are on the cut line that are in right now. Uh, from there, it is Herbst down by 20 after a rough night. Uh, Jones down by 89, Moffitt down 116. And then you know, from him on down, it's, it's not even. I, I'd say from Jones on down, it's done. Again, I, I can be... A, I, I can be a broken record and just rip and rip and rip and rip on Brandon Jones, but at this point, it's just to be expected. It is 
I, I don't know what other way to put it. All of his teammates are running with race winning speed or running really well. And then there's the nine car who does bad. And I know he got caught up in a crash, uh, but it, it's just ridiculous. He should not even being caught up in a crash. He should not be 89 points behind Parker Clickerman. He should not be behind Riley Herbs. He should not be about to be passed in a JRM car in points by Brett Moffitt. It's ridiculous to me. Uh, I, I do not understand how this happened, man. It, it, it is, it is full on, uh, pay driver status at this point. And I hate saying that because I, I do like Brandon Jones. I've been at Brandon Jones wins before, uh, but at this point he is the definition of a pay driver, by the way, for a little fun pull, I'll put this one up for you. I know my pick, but I don't know. I, I figure we'll do a fun pull at the end, near the end of each of these streams from now on, just to kind of have a little levity. Uh, but I, I, I'm going to switch, though. I do feel bad for Herps because, honestly, I think that, man, he, he, he started the season so well and so consistent, and it just went to hell in a handbasket. Um, by the way, I keep forgetting to do it, but I wanted to do um, my memorabilia little uh, thing in these to end off. Uh, so for this one today, it's for you Jimmy Johnson fans who long-suffering – Jimmy Johnson fans. Yeah, I, I would have put Little Red Corvette, but it only gave me four options to give. Uh, but I wanted to show you all something really cool. I've talked about it, I think, before. I might have mentioned it or even shown it on screen before, but I wanted to kind of talk about this one. Uh, this is a, a Jimmy Johnson card heading into 2011, uh, and this is what we got. This right here, the black J on it for Jimmy is a piece of his tire, one of his tires from his burnout in the 2010 Ford 400. Uh, it is, I do not collect cards. I am not one of those people who, you know, goes nuts with card collecting and stuff. But this is pretty damn cool. Uh, so I got, I got some other ones. Like I got a signed Joe Nemechek card that I got him to sign in person. I got some other stuff from different tracks. I actually have a signed Bobby Allison little mini poster. Uh, and yes, Noah Coleman, that hammering you hear is y'all hammering down and licking that like button. Hammer that like button. Uh, but yeah, I figured you guys would think that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, that that is Daytona Xfinity. I, I wish I had more to say. I thought it was a pretty good race. I thought the overtimes and crashes were a little excessive, but... Not the end of the world bad by any means. Uh, I had a lot of fun tonight, and I cannot wait for tomorrow night. I have a feeling tomorrow night still will be. I think tomorrow night will be more of a crash fest. Uh, but hopefully hopefully I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I will be. But thank you guys all for coming out tonight, and I can't wait to see you tomorrow and Sunday. And uh, yeah, y'all have a good night. Have a good one. Get some rest because Lord knows we are all going to be stressed out tomorrow night. Not y'all.